Hi guys, I'm okay. We're live on YouTube and going live on Facebook as well. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, so I'm streaming both to Facebook and YouTube. So if you join, let me know that you're here. If you're a photographer, this one is for you, like all my other videos. Um, yeah, so please leave a comment once you guys join. I'm going to wait a couple seconds for people to join. I'll write a comment here. And we're going to be talking about wedding consultations um, today. If you are doing wedding consultation slash meeting patients which means with couples how it's working okay. I'm gonna leave this comment so people join just leave a comment can I leave a comment mm -hmm. Leave a comment. Okay, yes, I can see the comments. Um, okay, so we are going to be talking about wedding consultations. So, oh, I'm turning myself down. Um, so, yeah, just leave me a comment. Let me know if you have questions as I talk about this. So, I don't know about you guys, but in the last like week or two, I've gotten um, like four or five wedding inquiries for 2021, 2022, almost fully booked for 2021, which I'm so grateful for. And I really believe that the success in booking has been has been coming from the consultation call and the, the way that I'm running these calls. Um, so I wanted to just come on here and see, talk about it with you guys. If you don't watch this live, that's fine. So you can still contribute to this discussion. Leave a comment down below because I think it's a really important topic. Um, so just, you know, as a pre-reference or whatever, um, when I, before I was charging 2,500, it was okay for me to not charge. I mean, sorry, not do a wedding consultation um, for couples who are paying less than 2,500. And then I, as I noticed, as I started to try to charge, more than 2,500 for a wedding, for wedding photography, it became really important to start doing um, consultation calls. So this is how I've kind of come up with a method to do them and I'm gonna share it with, exactly with you. So the first thing is that you wanna have a process for scheduling this call, right? So if you go on my YouTube channel, I have another video and if you guys aren't using HoneyBook, that's like the number negative one step. Um, so 50% off discount code for HoneyBook if you need to get on HoneyBook. But um, if you go to the YouTube video, I will link later down here in the description. Um, it will show you how to automatically respond to inquiries um, that come through your website, and it will send them a link to your to schedule a consultation call, right? So um, HoneyBook with COVID rolled out a new feature where you can do schedule calls, and it actually is already integrated with Zoom. So when people, when someone inquires, I don't have to do anything and they'll automatically schedule a Zoom call with me for slots that I have like predetermined in HoneyBook. So I'm checking in the comments. Okay, so I think that makes sense to everyone so far. Yeah, so the people can schedule it automatically. Watch that website video if you haven't already. Um, okay, and then once you get on the call, so I am working on this pricing guide that's going to be a free guide for you guys. Um, it's going to be coming out in the next week or two, but basically it's going to show you exactly what I'm going over with couples on the call. So the very first thing is to schedule the call easily because that's your first impression, which we talked about. And then once they get on the call, I think it's so, so important to establish that connection before you talk about pricing, right? So um, people, there's this, a lot of psychology on purchasing, and I could tell you all these things about psychology books that I've read, but basically people hate to um, be sold to, but they love to buy. So what you wanna do is you wanna stay in control of this conversation 
but they are the ones making the decision and make them feel empowered to make their decision. So the way you go about making a connection with complete strangers is you just, what I usually do is I just say, hi, thank you so much for taking the call. Um, please tell me a little bit about you. And I open up the floor for them to just tell me whatever it is they want to tell me. And if you say, please tell me a little bit about you, people won't tell you anything that they don't want you to know. So they'll usually talk about something that they want to talk about more. So when they say, oh, we met here, oh, we met there, what I usually do is I try to get the whole story from how they met up until um, like present day. So they'll say, oh, we met here. And then I'll say, oh, okay, where'd you go for your first date? Where'd you go for that? Where'd you go for that? All the way until, okay, oh, and then you got engaged last month and now here we are. So you wanna stretch this story as long as you possibly can. And the reason for that is the whole time they're talking, you wanna be looking for connection points and ways to like find something in common with them. And it could be literally anything. It could be like, oh, you like books? I like books too. Whatever it is that will possibly make a connection between you and them is going to be helpful in them trusting you and seeing you as on their side because people like to work with people who are like them. So let me know if that makes sense. I'm going to take a drink. I went to Popeyes. Okay. So, um, yeah. Sorry, talking for six minutes straight is actually kind of difficult. I'm learning. So <laughs> six minutes straight. Um, okay. So that being said, once you once you get the story up till present day, right? Then when once the wedding is either brought up or they bring it up, I try not to bring it up until they bring it up. Um, you want to? Oops. Uh, that's when I'll actually share this file that I'm working on coming out for you guys. So basically the file is going to have several things. So it's going to first, first state my mission and values as a company. Um, and I'll explain like I want to be very involved in the process for all of this and all those things, right? Um, so it kind of weeds out people who are less interested and more interested in a transactional um you know, interaction. So I talk about my values as a, as a company. And then what I'll do is I'll show them sample galleries and we do, we offer video to sample videos, all the samples, and I'll point out things that would be similar to their venue. So what you want to do is make it look like you are the perfect photographer for their day because you photographed something very similar to what they are doing. Um, and alongside that, I will also usually make a timeline with them um, or show them a sample timeline if they haven't, if they don't have enough details to actually make a timeline together. So it all goes back to like you are trying to make it to where like there, it doesn't make sense for them to keep looking because you have just made all this custom stuff just for them, right? So once you do um, the sample galleries, and the timeline and a little bit about you. After that, you wanna go into pricing. And there's a ton of education out there on how to display your pricing. But the basics that I found to be successful are ordering things from most expensive to least expensive, having three of everything, right? So um, expensive, medium, and cheap package, and making your most popular package the medium package, um, and writing on there like most popular. So. People, sorry, I thought I heard something. <laughs> so uh, people really like to go with what most people go with. So like if you say most people end up booking this, like they don't like to stray too far from the normal. So if you write most popular on a package, it will be looked at more heavily than the other packages. So I usually will, with that timeline, make a recommendation for which package um, makes sense and based on which one's the most popular. So I'll do that. And then they'll you'll get direct feedback. As soon as you show your pricing, you'll get like a oh my god face. Or you'll get like a okay, okay. And guys, if you've done this right, if you've done this like slowly, not in a rush, take your taking your time to like actually get to know these people. Um, it will be impressive because most other photographers are not taking the depth and time to do this on this level. So by the time we get to pricing, I never feel like out of place talking about the price because I've already invested time and I've already invested in this relationship and people feel that. So 
Um, one other thing with pricing is you don't want to get insecure. You want to be so confident about the price when you say it that it only makes sense because you can only sell something to other people as much as you would sell it to yourself. So that's what, um, when you start talking about pricing, that's really important. Um, I know this video is getting long, it's 10 minutes, but <laughs> once you uh, finish talking about the pricing, what you wanna do is, like I said, make a recommendation for um, which package would work for them, see their feedback. You're gonna go one of two ways once they respond. So you're gonna say, would you guys like me to make a proposal for you for that particular collection for that number of hours, whatever it is you recommended? And you'll usually get a yes or a no. Excuse me, sorry. You'll usually get a yes or a no, right? So yes, then you're gonna go ahead and make a proposal and tell them exactly what the proposal is gonna entail. So you say, say I usually say, I'm gonna send this proposal to you in the next 30 minutes and it's gonna have a contract. It's gonna have a 25% deposit needed to lock in your date. And um, if you don't, if you, if I get another inquiry on your date, I will send you a message. Wait two days before I talk to another couple. So that's usually what I say. That's how I say it. And then if they are feeling like, oh, they're not sure they're ready for a proposal, I'll usually say something like, okay, I'm going to send you this document. So I send them that whole brochure that I just talked about. And, um, and I tell them, okay, just look over and let me know if there's a collection you would like a proposal for. And then I sit and I wait. And then um, most of the time, this has got this is about an 85, 90% conversion rate with couples um, booking with this consultation call script kind, not really script, but kind of process that I just went over with you because it will look really impressive. So let me know in the comments, even if you, I know people are probably working and busy right now, so not a lot of people are on the live, but what usually happens with these lives is you can leave a comment later if you watch it later. And let me know if you have questions on literally any part of this because it's it's so so important. This has been so helpful in changing my business and I and getting booking because I'm like fully booked this year. I can take on like one or two more weddings because of this process. So um, I really believe in this, and I really want you guys to try this if you're not trying this already. So let me know if you have comments or questions on anything about this because I think it's really really important. Um, also, I didn't like take a course on this or I didn't like pay someone to tell me this has all been through like trial error, which I think is like the most powerful way to learn. So I have tried all the things <laughs> that there are to try and this works the best. So all right, I'm going to stop making this video longer and longer. But thank you guys for joining and I will keep making videos and keep posting to here on YouTube. We have some different kinds of videos coming this week on YouTube, which I'm excited about. So all right. Bye, guys.